watching from my window the curtain coming down a blue as black as warning a silence like a sound that rattles at the cages that hold my heart and mind I call my name to wonder just what I hope to find Hi, my name is Letitia James, and I am the Attorney General of the great state of New York. Welcome to Women Take the Stage. Today is Equality Day and the centennial of the passage of the 19th Amendment, the landmark legislation that our foremothers fought tirelessly for to ensure that women had the right to vote. We are here to commemorate this milestone, but we are also keenly aware that it didn't signify a victory for all women. Black women were still denied the basic right. They were still denied their voice. And in too many parts of our country, that still rings painfully true 100 years later. Each and every one of us has a duty and a responsibility to carry on the work of all the courageous women who fought for this right. We all have a responsibility to do our part, to endure that this right is protected and that we are active participants in moving our state and our country forward. It was New York women who sparked this change. And it is New York women who will continue to see it through. New York, New York, New York, New York. New York is where I'd rather stay. We have, for the first time, the tools with which to make a difference in our lives, in the lives of our children, and in the hopes of democracy. Hello, I'm Gloria Steinem, and I am very happy that the American system of government is based on one that was here long before European colonizers showed up. It was based on concentric talking circles that included everyone. And in fact, when Benjamin Franklin invited four Native American advisors to the Constitutional Convention, their very first question was, where are the women? Well, now the women are here.
the corners, capitals, corporations of city halls. All over various Turtle Island, our presence will break the silence. Together, brothers and sisters, I don't know the I am Gail Small, Vihonut, from the Northern Cheyenne Tribe of Montana. I am the Program Director of the Spirit Aligned Leadership Program. Our right to vote is in real danger today. America's first people urge you to vote. We must step in, each and every one of us. We can create a world where justice can actually happen. The powers that be are trying to stop us from voting. Get your vote counted, no matter the challenges presented. Your vote is your voice. Niaash. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vanessa Williams. In the 1800s, Isabella Bomfrey and Arminita Ross rose to prominence as anti-slavery crusaders in New York. Both were enslaved and gained their own freedom, changed their names, and never stopped fighting for civil rights, specifically the right and the vote for women. Isabella's five-year-old son Peter was stolen and sold back into slavery. To save him, she became the first black woman to go against a white man in court in America and win. Soon after, Isabella, who stood over six feet tall and spoke with mob calming authority, changed her name to Sojourner Truth. At barely five feet tall, Armanita Ross was small, but she towered in courage. After a slave owner hit her in the head with a shovel, she developed epilepsy, seizures, and hypersomnia. Despite that, she escaped from slavery in Maryland, but then returned back to break out more members of her enslaved family. In all, she made over 13 secret trips and personally led 70 enslaved people on the Underground Railroad to New York and to freedom. This brave American patriot didn't stop there. She served the Union Army as a nurse, led troops on raids to free those on plantations in South Carolina, and changed her name to Harriet Tubman. She was buried with full military honors in Auburn, New York. In 2016, she was to have replaced slave owner Andrew Jackson on the $20 bill. We are still waiting, but someday soon we may be rolling in the Tubmans. I can 
feel it in my bones And I know what's around the bend Might be hard to face cause I'm alone And I just might fail But Lord knows I tried Sure as stars fill up the Hi, I'm Alicia Garza, and I'm the principal at the Black Futures Lab and the Black to the Future Action Fund. At the Black Futures Lab, we work to make Black communities powerful in politics. What we know is that the challenges facing our communities are complicated and complex, and their solutions require innovation, experimentation, and most of all, requires Black political power. So that's what we do. We build Black political power. If you want to join us, you can help us by engaging in a number of ways. Number one, visit our Electoral Action Center at blackfutureslab.org and spread the word to everyone you know who needs to learn how to vote, figure out how to register to vote, and find out if they are currently registered, even though they sent their registration in. It also helps you learn everything you need to know about who represents you from City Hall all the way up to Congress. We really want you engaged in this electoral cycle. Hi, I'm Judy Gold. It's little wonder that the women's rights movement was born in New York. Native women had great power in that part of the land. In their egalitarian system of government, the leaders were all elected by the women. Every land negotiation had to be approved by the women. Any act of war could be vetoed by the women. As life givers, they controlled their own bodies. They decided when life began or could be taken. Any man who committed sexual assault could be banished or sentenced to death by the women. They had frequent contact with their settler neighbors, including Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott, who marveled at the power that the native women had. The right to own property, to have matrilineal succession, to vote. They vowed to hold a convention for the rights of women in their hometown, Seneca Falls. More radical, a revolutionary was Matilda Jocelyn Gage, who was arrested trying to vote in New York, who staged a protest at the dedication of the Statue of Liberty in 1886, arguing a woman couldn't represent liberty in America when a woman couldn't even vote. Matilda advocated so persistently for equal rights that she influenced the writing of her son-in-law. He created an imaginary world ruled by immensely powerful women. His name was Lyman Frank Baum. His book, The Wizard of Oz. Children, I'm gonna do what the spirits say. Do children I'm gonna do what the spirits say? Do children I'm gonna do what the spirits say? Do my Lord and obey do. the spirit of the Lord. Do what the spirits I'm say. Walk, walk when the spirits say walk. Children, I'm gonna walk when the spirits say walk. I'm gonna walk over Jerusalem yeah. just like my John. Lord. I'm gonna walk, walk when the spirits say walk. Do what the spirits I'm say. I'm gonna shout when the spirits say shout. Yeah. I'm gonna, gonna shout when the spirits say shout. shout. Yeah. I'm gonna shout yeah. like the children in the battle of Jericho. Mm -hmm. Shout when the spirits say shout. Do what the spirits say. I'm gonna say. sing. 
of the Dolores Huerta Foundation. Uh, I'm so happy that we're all together here in this movement to get women elected. We know that now is the time that we need to have our women not only to serve at the national level in the Congress, at the state, the state legislatures, but also on our local levels. We need you on our school boards, on our recreation boards, on our college boards, on our utility boards. We have so much work to do as women. We've got to get in those decision making positions. And so I'm so happy that all of us are working together. Uh, we've got to build the women's movement. We've got to get the Equal Rights Amendment. Yes, we can do this. We just got to go out there and organize all of those women to understand how important women's voices are, women's decision making power is, and that's what we do with the Dolores Huerta Foundation. We empower women at the grassroots level so that they can become engaged and now we've all got to go forward because we have an important election coming up this November. So we've got to organize, 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 mobilize, mobilize, mobilize. We can do it. Si se puede. Hi, I'm Carol Jenkins, CEO and co-president of the ERA Coalition. Back on March 25th of 1911, a terrible fire broke out in Greenwich Village in New York City. 146 young, mostly immigrant women lost their lives behind a locked door on the eighth floor of the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory. Their shocking deaths exposed the true horror of sweatshops to this nation. After the tragedy, unions rose, and for the first time in America, regulations began to protect the safety of workers. Women banded together to stand up to even the most powerful bosses and companies. The Equal Rights Amendment was proposed by Alice Paul in 19. 19- 
23. Almost 100 years later, the majority of people in this country believe that women are protected in the Constitution. We're not. There are a couple of steps we need to take. Back in 1972, Congress passed the ERA, sent it out to the states for ratification. The required 38 states are now ratified. The House of Representatives voted this year to dissolve the arbitrary time limit on the ERA. We need the Senate to do the same. The majority of Americans want the ERA. It will help protect all family members equally for the first time. It's right. It's fair. And after 100 years, it's certainly time. Hey, I'm Emily. I'm Amy. We're Indigo Girls. Here's a song for all the activists out there.
My name is Charlotte Manchin, and I'm the creator and director of Unladylike 2020, the series of 26 documentary shorts created for American Masters on PBS. I wanted it to be this treasure trove of stories about women from the turn of the 20th century who were often the first in their professional fields. When I realized that 2020 was the centennial of women's suffrage, I knew that that was the perfect year to bring these stories back to life, taking stock of how far we've come, but also what remains to be done. We want viewers to discover new role models, new stories of women who stood up for what they believed in, and a number of the struggles that they led 100 plus years ago still resonate today. I'm out here with my little waterfall as a prop <laughs> at the Women's Rights Convention of Seneca Falls. Elizabeth Cady Stanton presented the Declaration of Sentiments. There were 12 resolutions calling for moral, economic, and political equality for women. At a time when white women were taught to remain quiet, convention organizer Lucretia Mott and other Quaker women spoke up powerfully to end slavery, inspiring other women to find their voices and to join the crusade of black abolitionists. Charlie Grimke, Frances Harper, Sarah Redman, and Harriet Tubman. Yet, after the Civil War, when black men got the vote and women didn't, tensions among suffragists grew. Black women started their own civic clubs, and in 1896, Mary Church Terrell became the first president of the powerful National Association of Colored Women, an organization that fought at the intersections of both gender and race change was in the air. And after decades of petitions to legislators, after marches, pickets, jailings, hunger strikes, and beatings, beatings of protesters by police, the 19th Amendment finally passed in 1920. Though some women could vote, suppression and discrimination barred millions for decades. Immigrants of Asian descent couldn't vote as citizens until 1952. Not all Native American could vote, until 1962. Not all African American women could vote until both the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act passed in 1965. The 19th Amendment was a significant milestone in the long and rocky road to equal rights in America. You know we have miles to go. You know voter suppression is a problem today. But in the spirit of the great foremothers who paved the way, let us not grow weary of doing good for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. May it be so. Somebody told you long ago 
Some people were born to hurt Somebody told you long ago Some folks got what they deserve Somebody told you long ago You stay down where you belong Somebody told you you can't change it You're about to prove them wrong Cause We got change Said we got change and I'm marching feet off We got change yeah, we, we got, got change, change every time we speak, oh. We got change. Yeah, we got change in the voting booth, oh. We got change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we got, got change. We got change. We got proof. We got change. We got proof. We got change. We got proof, oh. We got change. We got change. We got proof, oh. Yes, school this fall is going to be a challenge. Students will need to be more self-motivating. Parents will need patience and compassion as they model resilience and grit. And schools will have to pivot and pivot and pivot again to respond appropriately to the changing environment. But we can do this. We must do this because education is all important to our American democracy. Why? Because education can lift us from poverty, help overcome inequality, and create informed citizens to improve our neighborhoods, our nation, and our future. It may not be easy this fall, but we gotta let go of how classes operated before and now embrace new models of learning. What matters most is not whether this is temporary. What matters is that we're standing tall, squaring our shoulders, and doing the work to attain the best education possible, regardless of the changing circumstances. Educated voters can make the most informed decisions about the people that run the country and the policies that govern our nation. So let's get going and prepare ourselves to bring about the change that we need to improve lives and ensure equality. My name is Zuri. And I am Stacy Ann Chin. The poet Emma Lazarus wrote, Here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch, and her name, Mother of Exiles. In the late 19th and 20th centuries, America had a boom in migration. Many of the warnings and panic we hear today about strangers on our shores were said then as well. The biggest fear was that immigrants were going to take American jobs, cause crime, and change the culture. New studies have found that the U.S. counties with more immigration at that time today have higher average incomes, less poverty, and lower unemployment. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Currently, immigrants are 14% of the U.S. population, but they started 25% of all new businesses and won over a third. That's 30% of Nobel Prizes in science. Send these, the homeless, tempest to Tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. 3.1 million immigrants were expected to be naturalized before the upcoming election. Many in key battleground states. These votes were expected to play a decisive role in local, state, and national elections this fall. Until the pandemic hit. America is aging and desperately needs a robust young labor force paying into social security. We are a nation built by immigrants. We flourish with the diversity of these contributions. Without them, what even is America? Sisters like jewels in a crown, vanilla, cinnamon, and dark chocolate brown.
they arrived, they arrived, they arrived, and they kept arriving. The indigenous sisters were the first to lay claim. Then sailing the seas by the millions, the immigrants came. Those sisters who looked like me crossed in the bellies of ships longing to be free. Giving birth to the future, sisters from all nations arrived, quietly at first, listening to the rhythm, moving to the sound, knowing they were freedom bound. My name is Dr. Debbie Almentasser, and I am one of four women leading chapters in six states at Engage, an organization empowering American Muslims through political literacy and civic engagement. This year, we launched the Million Muslim Votes campaign to make sure that every American Muslim comes out to vote. At a time when American Muslims have suffered under the Muslim ban, I want you to join us in solidarity by letting your Muslim neighbors know about the Million Muslim Votes campaign. Send them to our website, millionmuslimvotes.com, and tell them to take the pledge today. Thank you. I came upon a child of God. She was walking along the road. And I asked her, I said, where are you going? And then she told me. I'm Lily Tomlin. In the 1960s, epic movements for change gathered strength across the nation. We are stardust. We are golden. In 1968, Miss America protest in Atlantic City Women filled a freedom trash can with girdles, makeup, and other trappings of feminine oppression, an act that became the enduring myth that they'd burned their bras. The three-day Woodstock concert spread anti-war messages of, of peace and love. And on June 28, 1969, the night after 20,000 mourners attended Judy Garland's funeral, a riot broke out at the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village, reportedly started by two trans women of color. A crowd of lesbians, drag queens, gay men, and allies spontaneously rose up and refused to back down to long-standing police oppression. The civil rights movements of the 1960s clearly showed millions we are all stardust. We are all we golden, are golden, and somehow we've got to get back to the and garden. we've got to get ourselves back to the garden. I 
can't wait to be free Can't wait to get these chains off of me I'll go where the time is racing I'll play my small part in the big solution Here we go Changing the weather Locking arms, dropping bombs wherever Can't we get it together? Where is the love? I've been dreaming about the sky Got a feeling we're about to fly Our power is out of sight And we won't be no ones getting by Johnson with the National LGBTQ Task Force, and we want you to speak out and get counted. That's why the task force has launched two campaigns, Queer the Vote and Queer the Census. LGBTQ people are underrepresented in the census, which allocates over a trillion dollars in support to communities across the nation, and over 20% of LGBTQ adults are not yet registered to vote but we still have time. And it is critical that we raise our voices for equity and justice. So don't forget to fill out your census by September 30th and exercise your right to vote on or before November 3rd. For more information, visit thetaskforce.org. Hi, I'm Billie Jean King. On every t-shirt you see now, girls rule. Women are queens and the future is female. But until the 70s, a woman was treated like a minor. She couldn't keep her own last name if she got married. Couldn't serve on a jury in all 50 states. Couldn't say no to her husband if he wanted sex. Couldn't get a credit card on her own without her husband's signature. Couldn't get birth control unless she could prove she was married. Couldn't bring legal action against sexual harassment because there was no penalty before 1977. Couldn't get a legal abortion for any reason at all, including after incest, rape, or for her own health. Couldn't be an astronaut or breastfeed in public or be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Then on August 26, 1970, on the 50th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, Tens of thousands of women across the nation joined the women's strike for equality and women took off. In 1972, Gloria Steinem, Pat Carmine, and others launched Ms. Magazine. Congress passed Title IX to end sex discrimination in schools. And for the first time, a woman could receive an athletic scholarship. In 1973, 
I played that guy, uh, Bobby Riggs, the chauvinist, and the Supreme Court sided with the majority of American women and made access to a safe abortion legal with Roe versus Wade. And Shirley Chisholm became the first black major party candidate to run for president of the United States. Her slogan, unbought and unbossed. We are who we are today because the second phase of the women's movement was a tidal wave. This is life, this is growing, this is bold, joyful, passion, so grateful, moving. This is inspiring, one voice of community. We are America, we're none other than each other. This song is for the woman who sees herself in your eyes. Oceans between mountains, she knows the time she fights to climb, she shines. See her leading with a purpose, taking space and giving hope. Knowing all the while she doesn't rise alone She lifts the woman next to her up As she ascends Cause she listens and she lives The message that she sends Our love for this woman That's my sister, a leader with a song between mountains She knows the time She fights the climb Shine on She knows the time She fights the climb Shine on Look how far she's come From different cultures And different lands Through the journey struggle she keeps an open hand through the sexist classist racist grind she keeps a steady open heart steady open mind all shades of skin all shades of skin she shines she shines, she shines She knows the time, she fights to climb She shines My name is Andrea Jenkins. I am the Vice President of the Minneapolis City Council. As the first black, out, transgender woman elected to public office in the United States, it is truly an honor. However, many trans folks cannot vote because their ID does not match the person standing in the ballot box. That is why we must elect leaders that understand the intersections of gender and race and how those things conspire to keep transgender and gender nonconforming people down. That's why I encourage you to vote on November 3rd because your vote matters. I'm Mia ives Jubley. Say you combined the entire populations of Texas, Florida, and Ohio. That's about the same number of disabled people in the United States today. According to the CDC, that's 61 million people. Yet this gigantic group of citizens didn't get full voting rights until 1990. Exactly 30 years ago this year, the Americans with Disabilities Act was passed providing legal framework to ensure disabled people like me have the right to vote. Even with the ADA, physical barriers still exist in 60% of polling locations. Expanding in-person voting hours, locations, and mail-in voting is extremely important during this pandemic. The myth of rampant voter fraud is the big lie at the core of voter suppression. 
According to the Conservative Heritage Foundation, in the past 20 years, only 0.00006% of all mail-in ballots cast were fraudulent. We can fight all of this, but it's going to take effort and we have to educate ourselves. And think of this, 61 million people could be a huge voting block. Tens of millions of people who are registered but are unable to physically vote could easily sway the outcome of any election. So join me and let's squad up, America. We are in this together. We are in this together. Money's tight everywhere. Overworked, I don't care As long as we are in this together Do your dreams fade in the night Keep believing It's alright It's alright It's alright In this together, we are in this together. Danger worlds in the air, overwhelm. I don't care as long as we are in this together. If change is worth a fight. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right Hold, 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 hold on Through the dusk till dawn Side by side, by side, by side, by side, by side. Without repair Overcome I don't care As long as we are In this we are In this we are We are in this together We are in, 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 in this together Hi, I'm Glenda Carr, President and CEO of Higher Heights for America, the political home for Black women. When you fire up a Black woman, she doesn't go to the polls alone. She brings her house, her block, her church, her sorority, and her union. We all have a role to play. We know that we are stronger and collective together. We need you to help amplify the leadership of Black women. So we hope you will join Higher Heights at higherheightsforamerica.org. You and my neighbors and all of us together will help Black women lead at the polls and on the ballot uh, in 2020 and beyond. So thank you for your support. Hello, everybody. I'm Kate Pearson from the B-52s and I'm thrilled to be part of Women Take the Stage. So welcome to New York, y'all. This song is an original song written with Chris Braid and it's never been heard before. It's called Higher Place and I'm joined by these wonderful musicians, Ken Murray, Kat Dyson and Ganessa James. <laughs> to a high 
Hi everyone, I'm so thrilled to be here with all of you for this virtual celebration of a very important milestone, the 100th anniversary of the passing of the 19th Amendment. The suffragists of over a century ago knew that women having political power would lead to better outcomes for an entire society. And now today, 100 years later, the proof is everywhere. Across the globe, research shows that when you empower women with equal access to education, economic opportunities, and decision-making, whole families and communities are lifted up. Across businesses, countless studies have shown that the more women you have in leadership, the greater the creativity, productivity, and the better the bottom line. And in government, the evidence points to the fact that women legislators sponsor more bills, pass more laws, send more money to their districts, and are more likely to introduce legislation that specifically helps women and children. It could not be a greater privilege to stand before all of you as the first partner of California to honor the brave suffragists on whose shoulders we all stand. Hi, I'm Megan Smith. As technology becomes more and more intertwined with our lives, certainly we're seeing that with the pandemic and certainly with democracy, we need more women at the front. The upcoming election is critical to our nation's future. Women are consistently the largest number of voters and we have to bring creative ideas and solutions and work together. Our elections cannot be tainted uh, by unchecked propaganda, by foreign influence, by misinformation in echo chambers where good Americans don't hear each other and, uh, and hear the truth. And also voting systems need to work beautifully. We're Americans, we know how to do this. Let's break stereotypes. A quarter of the tech jobs today are held by women. There's only representation of 3% African American women, 2% Hispanic American women, Native American women, like these numbers are ridiculously low. These are the power tools of our time. And they pay three times the average American salary. And there's millions of jobs open. 
technology in its greatest form is about love. It's about justice and about climate change solutions and poverty solutions and economic inclusion and democracy. Let's lift up all the women who've done incredible data and tech work for all of history from the beginning, like Grace Hopper and Ida B. Wells, data science journalist, Katherine Johnson, calculating us to the moon. And I bring up Ada Lovelace, who invented algorithms at the same time that Darwin thought of the origin of us. Algorithms learn from data, and they learn to be sexist and racist and ageist. And so we have to make sure that doesn't get encoded. So the good news is people are working on that. You can join us. President Washington said, knowledge in every country is the surest basis of public happiness. So come join the knowledge economy. The wisdom of women needs to be in the code and we need you. So let's vote together. My name is Tina Chen and I am president and CEO of Time's Up. At Time's Up, we are working every day to support survivors of sexual harassment and to change culture, company, and laws to create safe, fair, and dignified work for everyone so that sexual harassment doesn't happen. And those issues are on the ballot this fall. They're on the ballot every fall. And as we celebrate this centennial of the women's right to vote, we need to recommit ourselves to vote this November. So here's how you can do that. Go to whenweallvote.org, get the information you need to get registered, find out how you can safely vote in November, and then exercise your right to vote. Okay, you know what to do now. So go do it. It's time for you to take the stage. It's a new year, or about to be, and I want to forgive everything that has harmed me. Roll off me now, wave of cell tower, leave me now, my hands all power, here I am. Here I am. There's a lottery all in front of me, paid for by oil wars and some cheesy company. down. 